Here is your latest African news. Ethiopia. Abi returns to frontline announces more victories against TPLF. Ethiopian Prime Minister Abi Ahmed has returned to the front line and announced more victories against the TPLF. In a statement, his office said the Ethiopian leader is resuming battle leadership as the country continues to achieve crucial successes against the TPLF, a former ruling party that is fighting the government. Ethiopian forces led by the Prime Minister, who has headed to the front again, have captured the mountain chains of Zobel, strategic towns of Arojo, Fokisa, Boren, and cut through the main Waldia Mekel Highway, his office said in a tweet this week. On the same front, forces have also taken control of strategic towns of Dire Rukana and Sodoma. On the Wuchale front, joint Ethiopian forces have taken control of the Ambasali mountain chain and towns in the vicinity. South Africa President Ramaphosa tests positive for COVID-19 President Cyril Ramaphosa is receiving treatment for mild COVID-19 symptoms after testing positive for the viral infection this week. The president, who is fully vaccinated, is in self-isolation in Cape Town and has delegated all responsibilities to Deputy President David Mambuza for the next week. On his recent visit to the four West African states, President Ramaphosa and the South African delegation were tested for COVID-19 in all countries. East Africa Ethiopia Conflict South Sudan denies supporting TPLF South Sudan's government has dismissed claims that it is supporting the terrorist group TPLF. South Sudan Information Minister Michael Makiai said President Salva Kiir will never support the rebel group, citing Ethiopia's support during South Sudan's liberation struggle from Sudan is unforgettable. Addressing members of the press after the regular Council of Ministers in Juba over the weekend, Information Minister Michael Makiai said President Salva Kiir will never support the rebel group, citing Ethiopia's support during South Sudan's liberation struggle from Sudan is unforgettable. Makiai assured Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy of South Sudan's position and support for the current government. The information minister added that Abiy's regime should hold to account the people selling arms to TPLF. Tanzania and Kenya Tanzania, Kenya to exchange wild animals to boost reproduction Tanzania and Kenya have agreed to exchange roan antelopes and female black rhinoceros in a move aimed at boosting the reproduction of the two species. Tanzanian President Samia Soluhu Hassan said that Tanzania will offer Kenya 20 roan antelopes at a request by visiting President Uhuru Kenyatta. Speaking after talks between the two leaders in the day, President Hassan said Tanzania would deliver 20 roan antelopes to Kenya before Christmas. Tanzania has currently about 4,000 roan antelopes while Kenya has only 12 of the species. President Hassan also said President Kenyatta had accepted Tanzania's request for black female rhinoceros that will be sent to the northern Tanzania Serengeti National Park and the Ngorongoro Conservation Area where there are two black male rhinoceros to boost reproduction. Southern Africa SA reverses plan to send 200,000 Zimbabweans home. South Africa has altered a plan that would have forced about 200,000 Zimbabweans to return home, to the satisfaction of critics who said it would have caused a humanitarian crisis. The Department of Home Affairs gave a reason for withdrawing its directive to end the Zimbabwean exemption permit. The Cabinet's 23rd November decision to end the permits drew a chorus of complaints from human rights groups. They argued that Zimbabweans who have been living in South Africa for more than a decade were going to be sent back to a country with few economic opportunities. The exemption only applied to the Zimbabweans who entered South Africa Africa before the agreement was enacted in 2009. West Africa ECOWAS leaders agreed to reopen land borders in January 2022. Leaders of West African countries have agreed to the reopening of the land borders in the region by January 1, 2022. They also welcomed the reopening of already opened borders. This was part of the resolutions reached at the 60th Ordinary Session of the Authority of Heads of State and Government ECOWAS held this week. The Heads of State and Government welcomed the reopening of land borders in ECOWAS for the free movement of persons, the leaders said in a communique. They noted at the meeting that in addition to the closure of borders in account of the COVID-19 pandemic, the member states facing security crisis also tighten security checkpoints within and at the borders of their respective countries. Ghana Airlines to be fined for flying unvaccinated people to Ghana Ghana will fine its airlines $3,500 for each passenger who arrived in the West African country without being fully vaccinated against COVID-19. 
The latest measures taken by the country with some of the strictest restrictions in the region. Airlines will also be penalized the same amount for passengers who do not fill out a health declaration form before boarding their flight to Kotoka International Airport, the state-owned Ghanaian airport company announced this week. While Ghanaians who fly in without meeting the requirements will be allowed to enter the country and undergo a 14-day quarantine, foreigners may be refused entry, the airport authority announced. Burundi Burundi says it will never allow in a UN Special Rapporteur. Burundi's government has signaled that it won't allow a recently appointed United Nations Special Rapporteur on Human Rights into the East African nation. Foreign Minister Albert Shingiro last week stated that Burundi will never allow the Special Rapporteur to investigate the country. The UN Special Rapporteur for Burundi was created in October by the UN Human Rights Council to replace a commission of inquiry on the country. Burundi's foreign minister in his comments last week asserted that the current government has improved on human rights, pointing to the termination last week of the US sanctions program on the country. He objected, however, to continued European Union sanctions. Cameroon Samuel Otto hailed a new start for football in Cameroon. Former international player Samuel Eto'o has described becoming the head of the Cameroon Football Federation as one of the proudest moments of his life. Eto'o was elected with 43 votes against 31 for the former acting president Sedo Mbombo Njoya. Last January, the Court of Arbitration for Sport annulled the acting president's victory in the 2018 elections. The head of the Cameroonian Football Federation will soon face his first challenge when the country hosts in January the last stage of the Africa Cup of Nations. Eto'o's campaigns focus on promoting women's football and eliminating corruption in the Cameroonian game. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe, share and like this video. It's the best way you can help us to reach more viewers. Also, visit our website chinachaki.tv for all the latest news updates. Also, don't forget to catch the return of our show Africa in the News on our channel. You can directly support this new series by becoming our YouTube member or becoming a Patreon. And remember, Africa is watching.